Welcome to the Hosehead Electric Brewery Control How-To Video Series. I'm Corey with Brewtronics.com. Today I'm going to show you how to install Craft Beer Pi 2.2 on your Hosehead Electric Brewery Controller. First thing you need to do is make sure you have a wireless or wired internet connection. I am connected to wireless down here, so we're good to go. I'm going to open up the Craft Beer Pi install dock. It's going to tell me everything I need to know about the various controllers. Hosehead 2, 3BC, 5BC, Uno, depending on which controller you have, which GPIO settings you're going to need to use. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go to step one, disable auto start of Strange Brew Elsinore. So we're going to select this command by clicking and dragging. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to copy. I'm going to open up a terminal window. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to hit enter. Not going to see anything happen, but it's basically just copied that file back to the auto start directory from the initd folder. And next step we're going to do is download the software for Craft Beer Pi. So under step two, we're going to select this command git clone https github.com. Right click, copy right click and paste hit enter it's gonna download craft beer pie software from github.com and clone that into a folder on your SD card this takes a couple seconds here and depending on how fast your internet connection is it'll take a couple seconds to a couple minutes it's going to bring us back to the Raspberry Pi dollar sign. Next thing we're going to do is change the directory to the newly created Craft Beer Pi. So we'll copy this, or you can type it in directly. Right click paste, hit enter. It's changed us into the Craft Beer Pi directory. Next thing we're going to do is run the sudo install sh command. So I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to click paste again, hit enter one more time. Welcome to the installation of Craft Beer Pi 2.2. Would you like to run app get upgrade and app get upgrade, update and upgrade? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say no because my operating system is already up to date. So I'm going to say no and hit enter. If you're running an older version of the controller, I would say yes. Do all the updates going to take a while but might make things work a little faster. I'm already up to date so I'm going to say no. Would you like to install Wiring Pi? This is required to control the GPIO pins. The GPIO pins are what turns on the relays, the solid state relays and that kind of stuff so we're going to say yes or hit Y on the keyboard, hit enter. Just going to run through the script. and come up with would you like to install Gembird USB support. Uh, if you live in Europe you might have a Gembird USB. Uh, in the United States it's not available so I'm gonna say no. Hit enter. Would you like to start Craft Beer Pie automatically after boot? And I'm gonna say yes. Hit enter. Would you like to reboot the Raspberry Pi now? I'm gonna say yes gonna reboot the controller and come back to our desktop. 
Okay, so now we're going to open up the Chromium web browser. And it's going to tell us HTTP Raspberry Pi 8080 controller is not available. The reason it's going to tell us that is because that is the address for Strange Brew Elsinore. It is not the address we need for Craft Beer Pi. It's automatically set for Strange Brew Elsinore, so we're going to change that address. So how do we do that? We're going to go over here to Customize and Control. We're going down to Settings. And on startup, open a specific set of web pages. We're going to click set pages. We're going to go up here to our already set page and we're going to click on it and edit it. I'm going to delete the last part that says 8080 slash controller and I'm going to type in 5000. Hit OK. Hit OK again. Close my settings. Close the web browser and reopen Chromium again. So now it changed our address to 5000 up here. Welcome to Craft Beer Pi 2.2. We can select our language. I'm going to choose English. I'm going to click Start Setup. I'm going to enter my brewery name. Just type in whatever you want there. I'm going to hit next. How would you like to control and connect your actors? Basically, we're going to go over here and select GPIO. And what would you like to use for your temperature sensors? I'm going to select one wire. These are our sensors. And we're going to come to a hardware setup screen. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my GPIOs for my heaters. So I'm going to call this element one. It's going to ask me to switch. My element one yellow is going to be GPIO 23. Inverted is if it was backwards. So we're going to leave that unchecked. We don't need it inverted. And visibility we're going to leave unchecked as well. And we're going to click add again. We're going to call this element 2. Element 2 is going to be on GPIO 27. And I screwed up. This is actually GPIO 17 on the first one, not, tw not 23. Element 1, GPIO 17. Element 2, GPIO 27. We're going to add our pumps, so we're going to call this pump 1. Pump 1 is going to be actually on GPIO 23. This is the hose head 5BC. I'm going to click add again. I'm going to call this pump 2. This is going to be on GPIO 24. If I had an agitator or anything, I could set that up in here as well. Next thing I need to do is add our thermometers, so I'm going to click add. I'm going to call this one yellow. All three temperature sensors that are included with the controller are color coordinated. Yellow, blue, black. If you have more than that, they're going to be yellow, blue, black, red, white. Uh, so we're going to call this one yellow. We're going to select the very first sensor on the list. That's generally going to be our yellow sensor. We're going to click add again. We're going to call this one blue. We're going to select the second sensor on the list, and we're going to add one more. We're going to call this one black. And we're going to select the third sensor on the list. And we're going to hit next. It's going to tell, ask us for our kettle setup. So we're going to hit the plus sign, and we're going to add Kettle 1, you can call this your HLT, your mash ton, whatever you're deciding to use it for. We're going to select yellow. Call it, I'm 
just going to call it element one, yellow sensor. I'll choose the yellow thermometer, and I'm going to choose element one as my heater. It's going to ask us for the diameter and height of our kettle. Mine happens to be 50 by 50 centimeters. We're going to add another one. Call this one. Element two blue. We're going to select blue as our thermometer and element two as our heater. And hit next. Highly suggest you click on the donate now, craft beer pie. Give Manuel some money. He's uh, done a great job of designing this software. Click on Let's Go Blurring. Alright, so we're almost there. We're going to have to do a couple more things to set this up. So basically we have element 1 yellow, element 2 blue. Uh, so we're going to have to go in and configure everything a little bit different. Right now we're on Celsius. So I'm going to change that to Fahrenheit and just kind of rearrange some things here. So I'm going to click on Configuration. And we're going to go to Hardware. And I'm going to check these sensors. And I'm going to click Hide on Dashboard. Visibility 0. Pumps you can uh, turn on and off visibility as well, same with your kettles. Let me go back up here to configuration one more time. And I'm going to click configuration this time. And I'm going to go down to unit, click on that, and I'm going to change it to Fahrenheit. Hit check again. <coughs> We're going to go back up to brewing. It'll take us back to our main brewing screen. And we have element one, element two. If we click on these, these are going to automatically, or just turn the man, uh, elements on manually. Pump one, pump two is going to turn my pumps on and off manually. And we need to configure our kettles just a little bit more here. So we're going to click on this. And we're going to give it some control logic. Basically, we can choose from PID logic, overshoot logic, pump logic, so on and so forth, depending on how you want to use it. I'm going to choose overshoot logic, and I'm going to put it in 2, and hit check. Go back in here, choose a logic for this one. Check again. And we're pretty much all set. So, to say I want to hit a cer certain target temperature with this, uh, we have an auto button here, and we have a manual. For, this is going to tell us when it's on. We have a target for a target temperature. So we're going to click on our target. We're going to set our temperature to 155, or whatever you want to set it to. You have to have a target temperature set for it to turn on. So click on here first, set your temperature. Then if you click on auto, it's going to show you that it's element one is on. And it's also on, on the controller. And it's going to heat the water until it's 155 degrees. We can turn on our pumps. And if we click auto again, it's going to shut it back off again. And we can also create a recipe or import a recipe, create our mass step, so on and so forth. So I'm going to create a new step. Test. Set my target temperature to, let's say, 175. 
I want it to do that for 60 minutes. I'm going to create a new step. Alright, so you can create a whole bunch of different steps here and tell it to do all kinds of things, but once you create those steps, click back on Brewing. It's going to show you your, your steps you set up here. And I forgot to select my kettle. I'm showing you this because this is pretty common. So I want this to be kettle one, kettle two, hit check, go back to brewing. And if I hit start, it's going to go to element one sensor, and it's not going to do anything until I click this auto button. Once I click the auto button, it set my temperature, and it turned on my element. Once it reaches 175, it's actually going to keep it there for 60 minutes, and then it'll start the timer as soon as it reaches the temperature. So you can also skip the step by clicking this arrow and go to next step. And it flipped it from the yellow to the blue. I don't have my auto on, so it's not going to do anything. So I click on my auto, and it'll start that process as well. See my element 2 is on. Once it reaches 180 degrees, it's going to start my timer for 5 minutes. And then once it's done, it's going to come up and say, congratulations, your brewing process is finished. And you can click the check again and go from there. So that's it, how to install Craft Beer Pie 2.2 on a hosted electric brewery controller. Again, my name is Corey with uh, Brewtronics.com. If you have any questions, give me a, a shout uh, and on the website. Send me an email. Cheers. Have a great day, boys.